So, come up with some new content to uh, cover, just to uh, make some educational videos. I kind of promised to do that a while back, so I'm trying to stick with that a little bit. There's almost always something during the day that kind of spurs my mind to remind me, you know, I should make a video about that. Well, today, this video is courtesy of my uh, sales and tech guy up front, because he asked me why a Turbo 400 is stronger than a Turbo 350. So I'm going to give uh, some examples of that. Uh, Turbo 350 to me is a way underrated transmission. I used to build a ton of them. Seems like lately I've been building a ton of them. But uh, this is a Turbo 350 gear train. So it's output shaft, rear ring gear, rear planet. The sun gear is in the middle here. It's kind of stuck. You get the sun shell and uh, you get the front ring gear and the front planetary right here. All right, you can see the you can see the sun gear. That's the front half of the sun gear, and that's the rear half of the sun gear. And in the middle of all that is where this uh, low support goes. It goes in there like that, and it sits in the case on these the splined area, and it's snap ring in. And it has kind of a little spring that keeps it spring loaded against the case, which is one of the places that wears. The case actually is a bad wear point on the uh, Turbo 350. But we'll get into some major parts here, but you see the front planet on a Turbo 350 versus the front planet on a Turbo 400. So, you know, pretty robust comparative to that. This is the rear planet, actually 480, but same thing. You can see it's a robust piece compared to... Go ahead and pull this apart. This is the rear planet on a Turbo 350, which some of you guys are aware is very similar to the 4L60 series transmissions. The planets are uh, somewhat somewhat similar, especially this rear planet. It's a different gear ratio. The pinion size right here is different, and obviously where they're placed is slightly different, but they're uh, very similar design and structure. So that, as opposed to that, you can see the difference. So. Besides the planets being smaller, which, you know, these little small things are actually uh, probably pretty reliable to the 800,000 horsepower mark. Depends on how you're making that power, what the vehicle weighs, but uh, they can be made to work. The things that make it weaker are kind of a structural design issue. So the, the, the low support in a Turbo 350 is only splined here. That's probably about a quarter inch wide. And uh, like I said, it's kind of spring loaded in the case and it just sits. On the on aluminum on the back here and it has a snap ring on the front and that is kind of what holds everything centered in the transmission and it's, it, nothing nothing is very uh, tight fit the, this uh, kind of this spline here catches that and everything you know it runs on a case bushing right here um, the Sun gear has a bushing in the rear it has a bushing in the front and they run on the output shaft here and back in there and so that's what keeps the sun gear stable well, one thing to look at is the sun shell has the lugs here that catch the uh, lugs in the direct drum out here so you've got about a six and a half inch diameter give or take direct drum that's driving the sun shell and when it does so it tries to twist the thing over and cock it in the in against the, itself and that puts a lot of load on these bushings, which makes the sun gear not run true and centered, which loads everything off center. A Turbo 400 has a center support. It looks like this, you know, compared, compared to that. All right, well, one-handed here. You've got a way more robust center support. If you look, this thing has a bushing in there. This is the bushing, it's that long. For reference and uh, you can actually use a little bit longer bushing it's about a three-eighths of an inch longer you can also use but it's really not necessary and the Sun tube rides in that center support in that bushing approximately right there about like that and the Sun gear is gonna be on the back the rear splines there if you look at the center support this area right here actually in indexes in the case and on anything 71 and newer, there's a fretting ring that keeps those splines from rubbing on the aluminum. So they're sitting against steel, and then there's a snap ring on the front holding it down. 
and it's indexed in a case, keeping it centered on this machined portion here. And any of you that have ever built, you know, a, a reed case knows that this is a very tight fit. A lot of times you got to do some deburring and a little bit of clearancing to get the center support to even go in the case. Very tight. Additionally, the center support is bolted in with the feed hole for second gear. It's threaded and there's a, a hollow bolt that goes in those threads to hold it secured into the case. So it keeps it centered and tight and not not jerking around in the case where this thing can can wobble around the case a little bit it's not a huge amount but it's not uh we're not talking about an index fit at all by far so that's why turbo 350 when you get into building these things you'll see the bushings are usually shot you gotta replace all the bushings one of the upgrades we do when we build them here is we double up the bushings in the sun gear so we put two in the, each end and then redrill the lube holes and that increases the you know, you're using the whole area right here and the whole area back there to uh, for a bushing surface. So at least you're spreading the load out on the bushing some to not wear them out as fast. So that's kind of an ideal of the actual physical strength of the two units and why they're different. Is In my opinion, it's mostly because of the really rigid center support and the Turbo 400 and just the pure strength and size of the planetaries. But you also have the the direct drum is splined here. It's driving from the middle instead of you know something that's trying to that has all the leverage of six and a half inches trying to cock that sun gear like it does on a turbo 350. So one reason I say a turbo 350 is underrated is here's an example. I'm gonna start with a power glide, even though it's kind of not in the discussion. This is a high gear clutch on a power glide. That's a high gear clutch for a 350. A high gear clutch for a 400, 480. You see, it's a little smaller clutch, and the piston is definitely smaller. This is a 350 high gear piston versus the, the power glide, and same thing, 480, 400 size. So we know this small piston and this small clutch. Now you know they're getting up into an eight or ten clutch count, but we know that with the proper pressure, you know, 3,000 horsepower, that'll hold 3,000 horsepower. Same thing, turbo 400 size drag piston, turbo 400 size uh, friction. Six, seven frictions will handle, uh, you know, 3,000 plus horsepower. We've done it. We've done it here. Lots of other builders have done it. Uh, it's no, no huge secret. It takes a little bit of pressure to make it happen. Uh, everything has to be set up right, but it works. Turbo 350, comparatively, if you look at the frictions for third gear and Ford, they're basically the same size. And this is third gear and Ford in a Turbo 400. Yeah, the friction's a little smaller. If you were to calculate the area of the piston, the 350 piston's a little smaller, but it's quite a bit larger than the power glide and uh it, it has plenty of friction and uh, apply area you know plenty of piston and friction area for whatever power level you're ever going to put through the planetaries and shafts same thing turbo 350 intermediate piston turbo 400 intermediate piston 400 intermediate clutch 350 intermediate clutch the 350 has way more clutch in, in uh second gear and there's three of these clutches on a stock 350 for a V8. There's three of these clutches on a stock 400. So a 350 has more clutch capacity in second gear than a turbo 400 does. Uh, piston probably I wouldn't have, I'd have to calculate the area. It, it looks thinner, but the, the way greater diameter is probably pretty close to the area of a 400 intermediate piston. So we know from experience that a 350 can very easily have a um, pretty harsh second gear shift when you start, you know, up in the pressure and drilling the feed holes and trying to make them shift firmer, um, one of the weaknesses is the, the intermediate roller clutch setup, which usually gets upgraded to a Sprag or a diode and higher end builds. So those uh, those parts, um, the reason we have to upgrade them is because the shift can get really firm really quick, and uh, one two shift has taken the direct drum from, you know, about 85% of engine RPM to a stop instantly on a one two shift. So the Sprag gets upgraded because of that. But part of the issue is if you make it shift too hard, you're putting unnecessary load on the Sprag. So we, we try to maintain the, the shift and keep it accumulated on a Turbo 350 to not kill Sprags, roller clutches, or whatever, depending on the level of build. Because that's a, that's, you know, they have plenty of capacity here to make that shift happen really firmly. So no reason to try to make it... No reason to try to kill it. They have plenty of clutch. There's no reason to squeeze a whole lot more clutches in a 350. They only have four 
in V8 form on the direct clutch, on the direct clutch drum where a, a turbo 400 typically has five. Um, some of them had six, but it's really easy to just machine that piston down. It takes just a minute on a lathe. You machine it down, you can put five in there, but it's, it's a mod we, we kind of backed away from doing just because there's no need for it on most turbo 350s. We're just going to stick with a four clutch setup to, to uh, lessen the drag in first and second gear. But a little quick class on uh, the major differences and why the strength is, uh, you know, different because it's it's a question that's been asked. I've seen it asked online, but since one of my guys asked it today and I was showing him the differences on some builds we have going, I uh, figured I'd grab enough parts to, to make a little educational video. Hopefully it gives some people an ideal, you know, 350, really comfortable, 7,800 horsepower level. Above that, I usually would like to see a turbo 400. If you're already running one and you don't want to go through the, the process of changing everything to go to a 400, we'll keep pushing it. I wouldn't be terribly scared of it even at a thousand or more depending on the weight of the vehicle. So that's all I got. Have a good evening.